Hey everybody, I'm here with Derek Ahonen, writer of the Pie Pipers of the Lower East Side. Thank you for doing this. Hey, you're welcome. So I work with a lot of writers um, from all over the world, so I really wanted to pick your brain with a couple of questions. So tell me a little bit about your writing process. You said you write for how long? Per play, it takes about how long? A play takes about two months of thinking and two months of writing for me. Okay. At least. Do you do a lot of outlining first? Not really, uh, but I... I'll sit around bars or I'll sit around coffee shops and uh, with my composition notebook and sometimes I'll hear something and it'll just trigger an idea and I'll just jot down the idea and then I'll go home and you know it's writing to me is very much like uh, acting is when good actors say that they uh, don't know they were so in the moment that mm -hmm. they don't know whether or not they were good or bad or what happened like when I'm writing, I tap into like this subconscious part of me and like I'm writing away on the computer and I don't know whether it's been five minutes, five hours or five days and like I'll come away and I'll be like, what is this? And yeah. I'll just let it sit and then I'll essentially go back, give it a day or two and uh, look at it and figure out what's good and what's not. Do you find those days away are almost as important or more important than the days that you're actually doing it? Yeah, the days away are actually, I think, more important because it's it's thinking. It's uh, I think for me, writing is more thinking than you spend more time thinking about writing a play than you do writing a play. Mm -hmm. Now I know that sounds uh, uh, almost as though you're kind of pushing things back and being lazier somehow, but it's once you're committed and in the world of writing something. The mind is constantly, you can't get away from it. Yeah. All right. So the actual act of typing out what's going on in the mind doesn't take very long. Mm -hmm. Okay. But the thought processes of these characters, the people that you're thinking about, the story, the plot, the plotting, the arc, you know, you know, we want to talk about dramatic structure or any, you know, the chalkboard, we can outline how you read a play or, mm -hmm. you know, all that shit is spent in the mind. Okay. You know, I don't really necessarily need to uh, sit down and write 50 pages as to how a play is going to work when mm -hmm. the play itself is going to be 100 pages. <laughs> <laughs> That's just my thing. I'd rather write the play. I'd like, like, when it comes time to just say, well, write a treatment. I'll just like, I'll just write the play. I'd rather write the, the <laughs> Here, play for you. Or I'd rather write the film for you. Have you ever been like halfway through a play and just been like, I really want to take this a different direction? Like how do you just keep like everything streamlined and not like halfway through? I find a lot of writers like halfway through feel like it's boring. So they have to do something really different and it just turns out to be like a different movie. How do you keep things just streamlined? I guess... I've never had to worry about that. Mm -hmm. it's, I've, I know what you're saying, and I know a lot of writers that go through that. I think it just comes from a lack of uh, confidence, maybe, mm -hmm. in yourself. And I think maybe uh, since I decided to write, I've had a lot of people that helped boost my confidence, and I've shared my work early with people, mm -hmm. and I've had a chance to talk to them about, you know, what it is, where I think I'm going, and they'll ask me questions about it, and. Uh, you know, 20 pages in, 30 pages in, and somehow that'll legitimize it all in in the sense that it's a real play, and uh, if I can't answer a certain question, how do we then move forward? You know, mm -hmm. how do I move forward with it? Uh, and that helps. It helps to share work. It helps to read it with your friends, your, with okay. your family. Out Are loud. you in a writer's group? No, but I ran my own theater company for 10 years. <laughs> so, so yeah, not <laughs> <laughs> It was... So, yeah. so I, a lot of the writers I work with, they want to get into film and television, like, and it's so hard. Like, just any creating any kind of art is really difficult. There's a lot that goes into it: patience, confidence, luck, opportunity. And like, what what keeps you going? What keeps you motivated? I mean, you have had a lot of plays produced at this point. Yeah, I mean, without getting too. There's so many cliches about this one, but like, it's kind of either in you or it's not in you. Like, the drive to need to create. Like, I want a wife, 
and a kid and a family and like that normal life. I was raised in the suburbs of Chicago, mm. you know, where everybody's blue collar and you know, it's kind of like a nice 40 hour a week life, but there's a misery to it, mm. you know? And, uh, but part of me wants that, but then there's this other part of me that's just like, it can't stop not creating and that's probably why I've ruined all of my relationships. <laughs> but you put it in your Single place, at 34, so like, oh, you know. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there's been a lot of work that's been created. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of work that's, that's unproduced that's still uh, uh, waiting there, hanging there. Um, but I just, just it, me, I can't not do it. It's, yeah. It's, I can't. Do you have any advice for screenwriters, aspiring playwrights, that you could share to them? Yeah, I would say essentially, uh, let me look at the camera for this one. <laughs> uh, just write. The only thing you could do is write what you want to see. I mean, that's, that's it. I mean, that's what makes you original. That's what gives you your voice, whatever they call it. Uh, you write what you want to see, and uh, you try and fulfill it to the best of your ability. And uh, if you're unsatisfied with it, don't allow anyone else to uh, take a dump on it until you make it what you want it to be. Mm. You know. But also, with that being said, listen to everyone. You know, because you know it's like the person who's been divorced four times. Eventually, the arrow points back at you. So, uh, you know, that's great. yeah, so just write what you want to see and that's it. That's all you can do. Uh, because if you start, if you, if you fail on your terms, it's, it's a, it's a failure that I think you could live with. If you fail on somebody else's terms, unless you're getting paid a incredible amount of money, it's not worth it in my opinion. That's that. <laughs> I think I just fell in love. That was amazing. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Jack. Thank I appreciate you. it. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. We'll talk soon. Bye.